Hey everyone, I'm Rush Lock, and this is cable issue number six, though it's numbered on the shelf as number 150. Um, I happen to have the lenticular cover alternates for, uh, it alternates between the New Mutants number 87 and a kind of a throwback cover inspired by that one. Uh, this is a new story arc for cable uh, titled The Newer Mutants. This is part one, it has a new writer, new artist, uh, Ed Brisson, I'm probably destroying the name, and the artist is John Mellon. Uh, so it opens up with them jumping back 13 years into the past uh, to go to New Orleans. Um, 13 years from what time? I presume comic present day, maybe? I'm not quite sure. Uh, but it's a forensic, kind of like morgue type place. Uh, we see two figures walking down the hallway. No one is Cable. And the second one ends up being Longshot. Um, and they're coming there to obviously see a body. There's a, uh, an employee there, a forensic scientist, I'm sure, uh, doing an autopsy. And they kind of just push him to the side and... Take a look at the body, and it's Kandra or Kandra. I'm, again, I'm butchering names, uh, but I remember her from the external days. Um, so she's dead, being an external and immortal. That's very odd. Cable's concerned, and he knows that there's only one other external left, and that is Celine. Um, for any of you that were New Mutants fans, you'll remember that one, or remember that character at least. Uh, she's kind of a vampiric, power draining, or life force draining type character, and she herself is also immortal. So Cable wants to find out, did Celine bump off Kandra, uh, or Kandra now to become the last uh, external, or is somebody you know, hunting um, the externals, or is it unrelated entirely? Uh, it seems like Cable is explaining to Longshot, Longshot that the reason he's here in the first place um, is because he had a time distortion, uh, I won't say notification, but he had some evidence of time distortion, that's what brought him here to find out what's going on. You know, someone time traveling to bump off externals in the past, and if so, why? Um, so before they go to Celine, he wants to recruit some some extra muscle. Uh, bit of a spoiler here with the cover. That's obvious. Guess who he's going to go and recruit? But his first stop is Dupe. He goes to a drag race somewhere. Uh, Dupe is driving. Personal side note tangent: I have an irrational dislike for Dupe. Uh, it all stems from me getting out of comics for a while. And then one time, I was looking to get back in comics, I came across Ecstatic which was at the time titled X-Force, and I was like, that's not X-Force, so. Small tangent, I apologize, but Dupe, not a fan, but he's recruited on the team. Uh, he's going to be their, uh, kind of like their, um, help with their infiltration. I guess he can put up psionic shields or psi shields to stop them from being uh, noticed telepathically. Selene is an accomplished psychic. Um, as I approach Selene's residence, I believe she's being held up in the, she's been held, held up in the health arc club for quite some time. Um, at least from what Shatterstar can gather and Shatterstar is the next member of the, the team that Cable is recruiting he's been on recon or on, on overwatch for the building for the entire time uh, confirms that Selena's still inside so they uh, sneak in Blink yet has not yet shown up even though she's on the cover has not yet shown up on the team I don't know if the brunette on, the, on this cover is supposed to be Selene herself or someone else entirely I guess we'll find out in a future issue um, one way or the other but Shatterstar, Dupe, Longshot, and Cable infiltrate the Hellfire Club and run into Selene. Um, battle ensues. Selene thinks they're there to kill her. Uh, she's aware that Kondra is dead. Um, it's explained earlier in the issue that the externals share some kind of telepathic bonds. They probably know when one another is killed. Um, but once it's cleared up that Cable and, and crew were not there to kill her, they stop to talk for a moment and Cable makes a comment like, look, you're the last of the externals. You know, I want to help. And Selene just busts out laughing. She's, she thinks it's ridiculous that Cable would say that. And when he finds out why, it's because three other externals are sitting there, or standing there rather, um, being revealed as live that were previously fought dead. Uh, Kroll is one that I recognize, the purple guy with the orange braids. The other two I'm not familiar with. I'm a bad X-Men fan apparently. I'm, I'm supposed to know who they are, but I'm unfamiliar with them. We'll find out in the next issue who they are. But this is a whole new story, The Newer Mutants Part 1. Uh, I'm super excited for this one. The first story arc for Cable issues one through five um, were kind of a dud for me. It wasn't terrible or, or bad by any means. It just didn't didn't uh, make me excited to read the next issue. But this one has definitely hooked me. Um, as a nostalgia factor, the uh, references and throwbacks to, to X Force and, and New Mutants type situations. I'm looking forward to the next one. Can't wait, and we'll see you guys in the next issue. Uh, if you've read this issue, please post down below what you thought about it. Uh, any comments? different opinions, please feel free to share. Obviously, there's plenty of things that I don't recall or remember, so if you know who some of those characters are, that would be awesome if you told us. So please post down below, and we'll see you all next time.